Good morning and welcome to today's premium account short form market update. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. Presented today, myself, Leon Hine, current Managing Director of Investor Signals. I have 17 years of experience in the financial services industry and a licensed securities and derivatives advisor. The format for today's presentation being a short form, it's a quick summary of the macro update. We look at select stocks within the ASX top 50. We look at our options strategy that we've been setting over the course of the last week and we conclude with a summary of our portfolio allocation and short-term Australian share market outlook. The services that we provide are up on screen there. If you'd like to know more about those, please contact myself, Leon, at investorsignals.com. Moving straight into a graph of the XJO, and from a macro standpoint in the news, probably the biggest uh, news out was the fourth quarter GDP coming out of China, which came in at around 7.7% sort of year on year. Uh, it slowed marginally from the third quarter. Uh, we've seen sort of a, a knock-on effect where we've seen iron ore prices pull back from around 140 a tonne down into sort of the high 120s and we're starting to see that sort of flow through to the impact on the price of BHP, Rio and Fortescue. Um, <coughs> Before I get into sort of the individual stock levels, at a macro level, as US fourth quarter earnings get underway, we're looking for US companies, S&P 500 to grow earnings on an annualised basis of around 8%. We move into the Australian earnings season in mid-February, we're looking for the Australian market to deliver on average somewhere around 5 to maybe as high as 8%. A lot of that growth will be coming from the resource stocks when you consider in the prior 12 months our market really delivered flat earnings. From a PE standpoint, our market's trading at around 15 times earnings. Um, obviously what's underpinning equity valuations at the moment is an expectation for global GDP to gradually begin accelerating and we're seeing continuation of a recovery in the US market. We're starting to see better data out of Europe. Um, uh, the low global bond yields are obviously underpinning equity prices as well. Domestically, there's a high probability that we'll see a further 25 basis points cut in Australia. Our base case for the Australian equity market is that we really do spend some time consolidating and moving sideways. In general, global equity valuations are relatively stretched from a standpoint of uh, until uh, global GDP does start to accelerate and we see increasing revenue and increasing uh, profit margins uh, to underpin sort of a further expansion in equity prices. We think what the most probable outcome is is that bond yields uh, start to stabilise especially in the US and we see a period where the market really treads water, that should provide a good environment for our investment mandate where we're predominantly running covered call strategies. Um, one of the big drivers of, of domestic equities has obviously been the shift in the Australian dollar and the graphs up on screen there. At the moment we're sitting at 88 so we're gradually seeing slight um, deterioration in the employment picture here in Australia, uh, not to a point where it's alarming but uh, nevertheless um, a combination of slowdown in the mining industry, higher unemployment and a low GDP or a GDP that's tracking below the Reserve Bank's target, we're seeing a Aussie dollar under pressure. The flip side of that is obviously the US economy is growing uh, a little bit quicker or leading the, the global recovery and we're starting to see the US dollar uh, improve uh, against all major other currencies. So um, obviously this is the desired effect of the RBA. They're looking to see the Australian dollar lower to help sort of stimulate the Australian economy. As I move through a couple of the stocks, I'll talk about the effect that's having on a few names within the market. So first of all, let's uh, kick off with looking at these trades that we've just done across the last week or so. So Coca-Cola, after being buyers of Coca-Cola at lower levels, as the stock rallies back up to around this 1250 level, I think it starts to look full value in the short term. I think if we go out 12 to 24 months, we would expect to see Coca-Cola maybe back up in the 1350 range. But right at the moment, the company, as we come into the February earnings season, we're not expecting the company to deliver any substantial earnings growth. They've already warned that they're... <coughs> 
at best will deliver flat growth. So that's a result that we'll look out for in the February period. From our point of view, we're selling the June calls. We're collecting at 12.45. We're collecting 40 cents for those. If you factor in the dividend, we're effectively getting 70 cents on top of the 12.45 level. So we're getting an effective exit price up here at around this $13 range. And I think that caps the upside. If, on the other hand, Coca-Cola just simply bounces sideways, instead of getting a 4.5% dividend yield, we're driving around 12% cash flow out of Coca-Cola. The other name that we've been active in is Woodside Petroleum. We sold the 39.50 April calls. We got 70 cents for those. Combine that with the dividend, we're effectively getting an exit price up around $40.50 out of Woodside Petroleum. Likewise, if the stock just simply bounced sideways instead of getting a 5.5% dividend, we're getting up at around 12 to 14% cash flow out of Woodside Petroleum. From a valuation standpoint, I think the stock trading at about a 5.5% dividend yield on around 13 times earnings, as I've mentioned in previous recordings, at around $39. I think it starts to look reasonably full value, so we're comfortable with where we're sitting there on the covered call level. IPL is another one. It's had a big rally off $2.30. We've seen uh, fertilizer prices or DAP prices improve over the last month or so. It's helped to underpin the recovery in IPL. We don't see uh, their earnings announcement in their ex-dividend period until roughly May. I'd expect that we probably get into a period of consolidation now. The stock's compressing down to a low dividend yield and there's whilst there's the expectation of improving earnings, we haven't yet seen a company announcement to support that. At around sort of three dollars I think it's reasonably full value. We've taken advantage of selling the two dollar ninety June calls and we've bought in roughly eighteen cents for those. If you combine that with the dividend, it's giving us an effective exit price of around three ten. I think that caps the upside if the stock continues to bounce sideways at or near this level. With the call premium plus the div, we're getting in excess of 10% cash flow out of IPL on an annualised basis. The other name that we've been active in is Origin. So we've taken advantage of selling the covered calls up at around the $15 level into May. The stock goes ex-div at the end of February around $0.25. Cents. So if you combine the dividend with our call premium, we're getting an effective exit price up here around fifteen fifty. With the stock down on a low sort of 3.5% dividend yield, trading on a high PE around 16, 17 times earnings, we have seen Origin... Um, deliver sort of subdued earnings growth and I don't expect that picture to change until we get into 2015. So I think the base case for Origin is the stock moves sideways across the most part of 2014. As we get into 15 through to 2018, I think Origin could quite easily trade higher but we'll reposition around that if we need to. In the interim, what we've got is a situation where if the stock moves sideways, Combining the dividend with the call premium again, we're getting in excess of 10 or 12% on an annualised basis. Now let's look at a couple of the names that we're trying to get set on that we haven't managed to yet. Woolworths again compressing down to a low sort of 4% dividend yield trading on a high PE. Around 5 to 8% earnings growth the company should deliver, so we'll watch with interest the upcoming earnings results in February. The stock goes ex-div in March, around 70 cents. If we can get set at around this 35.50 level, and we can collect roughly around 50 to 70 cents for that, combine that with the div, we're getting an effective exit price up here at around 36.50, and I think that more than caps any upside potential in Woolworths. Again, I think it's likely to bump sideways, so if we can collect the div, collect the call premium and drive 10 to 12% cash flow out of Woolworths, that's the strategy and we're looking to get set on that over the next week or so. BHP, we've been trying to get the calls away up here at around this $39 level uh, into sort of March, April. The stock goes ex-div in March around probably some, somewhere in the order of $0.60, cents, maybe a little bit more. Um, so again, combine that with the call premium and the div, we're getting an effective exit up here at around $40. I think that caps the upside. The stock's compressing down to a low sort of 3 and a bit percent dividend yield and trading up at around 13 times earnings. Iron ore prices seem to be under a pressure short term, but broadly speaking, we think iron ore will stabilise around that 125 to 135 range, so we're not seeing any significant risks for BHP. Over the last week, we've seen the production reports come out for Woodside, Fortescue, uh, Rio, BHP. The results have all been good. In particular, Woodside delivered a good production result. Um, the thing of note with Rio was that 
the significant wind back in the capital expenditure for exploration. So we're starting to build a view that we're probably likely to see uh, either increased uh, profits which may flow through to sort of a special uh, distributions or special dividends in the case of BHP and Rio over the next 12 months or so. The companies are focusing, especially in the case of Rio, on paying down debt with the additional profit as a result of the pullback in the exploration costs. But I do think sort of BHP and Woodside Petroleum still remain attractive as our resource exposure and we're not uh, currently exposed to Rio. So the dividends, again, the call strategy there with BHP is up at around that $39, giving us an effective exit price up at around $140. The other name that we're watching closely at the moment is AGK. As this compresses down to sort of you know, below 4% dividend yield, the companies mourn that they're not expecting much in, as far as earnings growth goes. We do think that the stock has the potential over the next 12 to 18 months to trade back up to around $16, but right at the moment around 15 to 15.50 is full valuation. So if we can get calls away above that um, and collect the uh, 30 cent dividend uh, in March as well as the call premium, we're effectively getting an exit price up at around $16. I think that caps the upside there for AGK. Uh, so stocks that we're sitting on and waiting for further upside movement. So we're looking, so we've, we've been buyers of NAB off this low. If the stock can push up to around $35, then we'll look to consider getting calls away at much higher levels, so allowing a bit of upside there within the banking sector. Likewise, with Westpac, we own it at lower levels, looking for further upside. We wouldn't look to cap that until it was trading up at around sort of that $34 level. Within the property play, we're starting to see the recovery in Stocklands after owning it here at lower levels. We've sold the $4.20 calls. We've collected the dividend at the end of December there. Again, driving about 10 to 12% cash flow out of Stocklands. And at around sort of $4 to $4.10, I start to think that that looks full value. The other property stock that we've taken advantage of buying on the lows have been GPT. We picked that up down here at around $3.40. Up at around $3.70, it starts to look reasonably expensive. Um, from a yield standpoint, it starts to compress back down to low fives and I think that at 380 it starts to run into resistance from an earnings growth standpoint GPT should deliver maybe somewhere around 5% EPS growth. Lend lease, we've been a buyer of this on lower levels at around 11.50 it starts to look full, full value and we aim to sell the $12 calls. I've spoken about Lend lease in detail, the company's indicate a fairly flat earnings growth in 13, but I think over 14 through to 16, we should see Lend-Lease return back to sort of uh, possibly 8 to 12% EPS growth, and that should continue to underpin share price expansion there in Lend-Lease. WRT, we've been buyers of this at lower levels. At around this 310 level, we look to sell the 320 covered calls. We're not looking for a lot of EPS growth here out of Westfield retail. We've obviously got the restructure coming through from the uh, WDC, uh, which will uh, consolidate their Australasian property trust assets into WRT and will have a larger exposure to uh, Australasian uh, property uh, within within the WRT asset. I don't think that changes the earnings outlook considerably for Westfield across the next 12 months, but nevertheless I think it's a fairly stable dividend play at around 5.5% yield. The stock should consolidate around 3.10 and we'll sell those covered calls, again driving sort of 10 to 12% cash flow out of it. Okay, let's look at a couple of the growth plays that we're exposed to. So um, Horizon, we've been buyers of this. The stock should deliver around 15% EPS growth. It is starting to get a little bit expensive over the course of two 2014, I think it can consolidate, find support around this $5 level and maybe trade as high as $5.50, but we're probably getting into a range now where it needs to consolidate and move sideways. So if we can get the covered calls away at around the $5.25 level, uh, that would be a good outcome there for AZJ. Uh, a couple of other growth stocks that we're participating in, Crown, we were buyers of Crown at lower levels, up here at around $18 short term, I think we start to look to take profit on the Crown trade. And Fox, as I spoke about in last week's recording, the stock's under pressure a little bit as fund managers dump it ahead of the delisting de of the ASX. Fox will become a US listing uh, only. The company should deliver about 8 to 10% EPS growth. I still think it's good value down here if we make the transition to holding it 
when it shifts across to the US market, I could see a further re-rating and, and from a PE standpoint an upside in Fox probably in the order of 10 to 15% from where it is at the moment. CSL is one of these names that are benefiting from the low Aussie dollar. We're expecting about 10% EPS growth out of CSL in the upcoming earnings season. The company is in the middle of this share buyback or another $900 million with the share they're buying back. I think probably at around $71. Um, we largely start to look to take profit. We own it at lower levels. We've sold the covered calls up here at around the $71 level, and I think that caps the upside over the coming sort of few months. Uh, just to finish off today on a couple of these Aussie dollar plays, um, <clears throat> so what we've seen here is Brambles should deliver about 8% earnings growth. The stock's trading on about 17 times earnings, compressed down to a low 3.5% dividend yield. I think it's likely to bump sideways. I think this Aussie dollar play is probably really being stretched as far as it can go in the short term. So I'm not looking for any substantial upside movement in the likes of Brambles and Cora Computer Share, but I think they're good names that we can sort of benefit from a tight buy right strategy where the share price moves sideways and we're selling the covered calls. So to, let's just have a quick look at the other two names within that sort of Aussie dollar basket that we've been playing. So Amcor, again about 8 to 10% EPS growth. We've had the split out of the Australasian packaging business, which is Aurora. We've sold those shares off and we're largely just left with the exposure here to Amcor. In the February earnings, we look for numbers for growth around 10%, but again with the stock compressing down to low 4% dividend yield um, and on a very high P up around 17, 18 times earnings, I think at best the stock just trades sideways. So to the extent that we continue to participate in Amcor over the 2014 as largely owning it at these levels and selling covered calls European style up at around $11 where we collect the call premium and the dividend. And then finally, just to finish off today, computer share up at these levels, trading about 19 times earnings on a low 3% dividend yield. It's just getting a bit expensive for our liking. So we own it at lower levels. We're delivering it, taking profit, and we'll take another look on a pullback to uh, to around that 1050 level. So just to conclude today, our macro view on the Australian equity markets is that gradually global GDP does start to pick up. We do get into an environment where there is more synchronised growth. The low global bond yield environment continues to underpin equities. It makes sense to continue to have exposure to the international names that uh, uh, strong US dollar earners. I think BHP Woodside Petroleum continue to make sense within the resource space. We're keeping away from the more iron ore focused exposure of Fortescue and Rio um, and we're looking to keep exposure into the domestic uh, property market uh, and playing the recovery or the ongoing recovery in the Australian housing market uh, as well as the fact that Australian bond yields are going to stay low and uh, superannuation money will continue uh, to seek sort of exposure to the defensive yield names. So anytime the defensive yield names, uh, you know, we're, we get concerned when the yields compress below 4%. Uh, anytime we can buy the names on yields up at around 5.5%, we see that as a good opportunity. Uh, and obviously we complement that with the covered call strategy. Thank you for listening in to today's recording and I look forward to speaking again next week. Uh, the information up on screen there. If you'd like to discuss any aspect of today's recording or the market in general, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me on 02923881.